guys, welcome back to another video. So, as you can see, today we're going to be making a mermaid tail. Because, well, it is still mermaid. So, I found this beautiful fabric and this is what got my inspiration started. Because, you know, fabric gets you inspired. The first thing I'm going to do is create a pattern. And this is just so I have something to reference in the future if I ever want to make another tail. But you don't actually need this, because I didn't have one either. So the first thing I'm doing is wrapping the fabric around the doll. Uh, and you can have it any size doll, it can be a Barbie doll or a smart doll, anything in between. It's the same steps. So what we're doing is I have folded over the top there and then I'm just wrapping my rectangle around here. So I'm pinching it in place and pinning it roughly. I do want it to be tight, but not too tight because I want to be able to slip it on and off easily. I'm just pinning this in place, just lining it up as best as possible. I do want to keep the seam as much as I can in the center back, trying to keep it as even as possible. It's easier said than done, but it is still pretty easy, honestly. So I'm just checking what it looks like, adjusting a few pins here and there. And the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I am going to go in there with a needle and thread. I'm just going to be hand stitching this in place. This allows me to take all the pins out and be able to slide the tail off without risking the doll in any kind of way because I don't actually want to damage her. With everything basted in place, it is time to remove the tail and it's the moment of truth to see if I can actually take it off, which I accomplished. So if you can't take it off at this point, you just want to adjust your stitches. This is the point of hand stitching it. So I'm just going to the sewing machine now. I am adjusting the sewing machine to a zigzag stitch because a zigzag stitch allows you to keep the stretch in there without breaking the stitches. It's a nightmare. As you can see here, actually, as I'm sewing, there is just a little bit of extra fabric in there, which I'm just pushing to the side because I did leave a little bit of extra room at that point. So I don't want to have any of that extra fabric. I want it to lay as smooth as possible. Hence, I'm pushing it to the side. But other than that, I'm just following my green stitching and just sewing either on top or just on the inside and for me, I did leave that extra room, like I mentioned, so I can sew on the inside. If you don't have the extra room, sew on the outside and then remove the stitching that you did before. But this is what we're looking like, so I am very happy with it. I'm going to be taking a pair of scissors and just clipping along the outside edge, just leaving a narrow seam allowance. I want as little amount of bulk in there as possible because you do end up seeing it, on, especially on this scale. So do a little narrow seam. It is a knit fabric, so you don't need to worry about any fraying. So no need for overlocking. Great, I love that. Great thing about knit. Anyway, I'm just finished that off. As you can see, my top is still folded over. I am trying it on still inside out because I want to see those toes. As you can see, I do have a little bit of extra fabric at the toes. Oh, I will be pinching like the little top there, but back to the toes. So I do have a little bit of extra fabric, which I will just sew again. So there we go. Still with the zigzag stitch, I am not cutting that off because I don't want to risk any of the other stitches coming undone. So now it's time to turn it inside out and try it on one more time. The moment of truth with it actually fitting inside out. And it does! Yay! You did it if you're following along and it fits! So there's a little pucker, but it's underneath that will be hidden, so I don't care about that little pucker. Uh, this little bit will get pinched together at the end there, just to give it a little bit more shape so it's less straight. I mean, I like straights, but 
we're just going to pinch that together now. And the best way to do this, I have just double looped my threads just for a little bit of extra strength. And then I'm just doing a whip stitch down and taking a few extra stitches there just below where the folded over bit is. And this just gives it that extra support and keeps that folded over bit also in place. You can wrap the uh, needle and thread around as many times as you like, but I decided just to keep it pinched and stitch it in place in the back there. Let's continue with the tail flipper. What can I call it a flipper? I have printed out a piece, so I drew it out on my iPad first before printing it out. And as you can see, I did layer this with some parchment paper or some baking paper, however you call this. And for my one, I did put a little bit of a organza fabric. So this is just a nice see-through organza that has a bit of structure to it. So I put this underneath so I don't actually have to fill the whole flipper with hot glue while it still remains see-through and flexible. If you don't have this, you can use any kind of fabric underneath. I just recommend you cutting out your pattern piece and then hot gluing around it first. That's the best thing that I would recommend you do if you can't see through a fabric. But this actually turned out really good and I really recommend you do this if you have a see-through fabric. Um, I just chose white because I had white at home. I don't have that many other options. And then I'm just painting this at the end. If you have a color that fits or if you want to use the same knit fabric that you use for the tail, it's just the same steps as this, except that you can't look through it. But still keep a parchment paper underneath as that will prevent the hot glue from sticking to paper or anything underneath. And there we go, I can just easily pull that off. So it's really nice and easy. And we're going to do the same for the side flippers or the side fins, I should be saying. So I did also draw this up. I was very excited and I wanted a lot of details on this tail. So I'm just going to hot glue all the way around and then filling it in slightly just to keep it and give it some dimension. And yeah, that is basically it for the flippers or for the fins, whatever you want to call it. time for painting. So I did witness a little bit, I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do, especially the gold detailing. Since my fabric has gold in there, I really wanted my fence to have that gold detailing. Other than that, I just got some paint, in this case mostly paint with a little bit of blue, and just brushed it on there. I didn't add anything else to it, but this is what it ended up like. And it still has that slightly see-through and really flexible beautifulness. So I'm really happy. Just a little side note with painting. I did have a newspaper to protect my table. But actually keep a piece of that parchment paper that you used before underneath. Because as you can see, that newspaper did stick to some of it where I was a bit heavy on the paint. So what you saw before, I did have on the second piece, so I had the parchment paper. So this is what we're looking like. I have cut it all out and the hot glue stops the fabric from fraying. So that's a win-win. And I am very excited to put this together. The gold and the pink with blue is matching really well and it stands out so beautifully. So I'm just putting a bit of hot glue on the end there and sticking it straight on. Yes, it was a little bit scary because I don't want to be damaging the door, but everything was okay. And I did test it out before, so it was okay. And anyway, this is what it is actually looking like. I'm going in with the hot glue a little bit in this toes, just to make sure it is covered really well and sticking on there. Just pushing that in there. It is hot, it does go through, so be very careful with using the hot glue. So with these side pieces, I tried to line them up as best as I can. I think I did pretty well, but I'm not that concerned about because you know, we're not symmetrical, so neither should a mermaid still. Yeah, 
So that was the whole thing, especially since these should be flowing in water. So it's not going to be symmetrical. So I wasn't actually too worried about it. So I just put a little bit of hot glue on all the, like on the edge there, as you can see where I'm pressing it onto the doll. So that's just a bit of hot glue to keep it in place. And then just folding it slightly, especially on the top there to make sure it's smooth. I think I could have done with it going down slightly further, but I'm actually happy with this, especially with the gap between the bigger fins at the top and these little fins that I'm gluing on now. So again, just a hot glue and placing that and trying to keep it symmetrical. Well, you know, not keeping it symmetrical. <laughs> Anyway, this is actually most of the tail done. I am going to be embellishing them, but we'll show you that later. As for a little something extra, I mean, we do need a matching top. And I would have done seashells, but I don't have any seashells. I mean, I don't live near a beach anymore. So got to do it with just a fabric top. So I did measure out how long the top needed to be. And now I'm just cutting it nice and even. It takes a little bit, but I'm just winging this. It doesn't need to be very even, just even enough for me to sew and turn the tube inside out. Once you have a rectangle you're happy with, you're going to fold it in half lengthways and then pin that in place. So using a zigzag stitch, we're going to be stitching this. Just use a narrow seam, you don't need anything too wide because I do want to leave a top, you know, don't want to have just a thin tube, we need a top. And with that done, you're just going to cut off any of the excess because I did want to have just a little bit of extra room, I'm going to be cutting that off as well as any loose threads if you have those. There we go. So all you get to do now is turn it inside out and that's basically your top done. Okay, not quite yet. We're going to have this seam in the center, so just have it nice and even. And we're gonna fold it in half and sew down the side there, that short edge. And this is what it looks like. And yeah, it doesn't, since it's the back, it doesn't really matter that much how it looks. You can do it nice if you want to. This is just for me. And to get the little pinch, I am doing exactly what I did on the tail, except that I am wrapping my thread around this time, just to get it a little bit closer, because the fabric is a little bit thicker now with it being too, you know, front and back, fully around. So yeah, that's the reason, and I'm just finishing that off in the back, just doing a few knots there. And that is actually the basis of the top done. You get to try it on. I mean, I hope you tried it on a few times already or measured it correctly. The good thing is it's a stretch fabric, so nine out of 10 times it will fit. And I'm going to be embellishing it. I really wanted to add this little gemstone on the top there. I also added a little bead there in the center just to get it a little bit more detail which I really enjoyed. And then I'm sorry I didn't film it, but I did go in with the hot glue gun and I made like a shell design on her top, which I'm going to be detailing with gold. And just for final touches, I did also put pearls on the flippers or in the fins. And this is the final result. I hope you like it because I am so happy with this. Like I'm so proud of it. And I really hope you try this out. This is a really fun technique, like the mix of fabric and hot glue. It gives it such a nice look. And as you can see, it is still a bit see-through in my case. I do want to try this again, but maybe with like a opaque fabric for the flippers as well. That would be really cool. But this is the final result. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of things like this and just any smart doll or doll related sewing, you should subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Consider giving this video a big thumbs up because that really makes my day and I'm just really happy to know that you enjoyed the video. And let me know if you make this outfit, uh, tag me on Instagram at dollymake, I really love to see your designs. You all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time, bye!